get some ass, got blades for days, got guns galore, got They've given you plenty of choice for microphones here. Yeah, this here. is really good. Right? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> so, thank you very much for taking time out and coming to be with us here at Comic Con this weekend, Stefan. Thank you so much for having me here. You know, I'm just, I just came back from filming Deadpool 2. We finished the movie, so it's going to be so crazy. And I hope I'm going to see you guys again next year, so we can chat about that too. And you mentioned work on Deadpool 2 there, but if we can just go back right to the very beginning of this for you, how did you kind of get involved in the first Deadpool? Uh, it was normal. Like I just got like audition for a Hush Hush project that was named Wham. <laughs> and I thought that I'm you know, reading for a George Michael my biography, or, <laughs> you know, but it was strange. And the role was the role of Timur. So I just, you know, taped you know, a few self-tapes and send it back to my managers and my agents. But then some, Tim Miller, which I didn't know, I found out later, he liked the way I filmed tapes, so he gave me a few more indications, and then I switched the name of the character to Wade, and because I'm a comic book fan and a geek, and I'm proud of that, I was like, there's only one Wade, and there's only one movie that's mm. going on right now, it's Wade Wilson. So for the callback, I did uh, 120 takes, That's and I had insane. to choose just four. So thank God I, I did it. So I'm now in the franchise, and I'm so proud because I'm, I'm Slavic, so playing Colossus is the only... Well, there are actually two roles that I could play, and that's Colossus, which I'm playing right now, and Craven the Hunter, you know, so... I got, I got the good one. Yeah, you did get the good one. And yeah. 122 yeah. takes. It, that is unusual by any standard for an audition. How did you settle it down to four? Uh, well, I needed some help. So, you know, I had like my, my girlfriend and her sisters and so many people just trying to, you know, for me, I couldn't see the difference anymore. Like 100. And, and that was, uh, if you remember the monologue, four or five moments, that's all it takes when I'm trying to stop Ryan from, from Deadpool from killing uh, Ajax. So it was weird, you know, I just, 120 takes of the same thing. I couldn't spot the difference anymore. I just got crazy, <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned there being a huge comic book fan. Oh, yes. And then when you got, when well, they finally told I'll have, you... I'll have to say that for me, you know, this role is an Academy Award for my inner child, you know. Like, I'm really <laughs> so proud. Like, I just, I just don't really care about anything else because I'm Colossus. I'm part of X-Men, so it's, it's weird and beautiful. And it, what, how did you react then when you got it, being a comic book fan, and getting a role like Colossus, someone who you've seen in comics and read and loved? How I reacted when... Well, that's, that's a funny story because I went back when I finished the... the the test shoot in Los Angeles, I went back to Europe because I was doing a performance there uh, in Croatia, in Dubrovnik. So I was sitting in a, in a cafe, it was like three in the morning, and I was kind of buzzed. So my phone was ringing and I was like, I, I saw that my agent is calling me, but I, I just thought it's maybe some audition or something going on. Mm. So I didn't want to answer, but he was calling and calling and calling. And then I sent a message like, I'm sleeping, which was stupid. But then again, so he was like, okay, you're not sleeping anymore. <laughs> so can you answer the phone? So I did like really, really bad acting of like, you know, buzzed sleeping kind of thing. Oh, hello. And he's like, man, you booked the role. And I, I, I couldn't believe, I, th I thought that he's like joking, because you know, all the factors at that moment, they just didn't play. And I couldn't call anyone, like my pa parents were sleeping, everybody was sleeping, I couldn't, I couldn't share that with anyone. No. And the guys that were with me at the table, they were like, okay, cool. They are not into comic books or like movies, they, and they were just like having beer, and they cared just about the beer. But next day I was sharing those things and I'm, I still feel like the happiest man in the world from this perspective. And when you got there and you got onto the set now, how soon did it take you to realize how far into the production they actually were of Deadpool? Well, they were like finishing the movie, but we, 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 I had like a stunt double, which I have still, just like a body because I'm doing all the other things from acting and face expressions and the voice and well everything regarding Colossus and I signed a four four picture deal for that. Wow. 
Wow. So I'm mainly on set for some things. I have a stunt double like every other actor has, but I'm, well, we, uh, I'm mainly working with Ryan on all these things because Ryan is such an amazing person and an amazing actor, and that guy is so funny in person. And I was, I was starstruck when I started working with him, especially because he's, you know, 50% of his lines in Deadpool were just made there on the set. Nobody can, you know, can wow. do this like better than he is. So working with him and in the first part with Tim Miller, and he's a comic geek too. So he knew and with the vision of Colossus, you know, because we had like the Colossus in the X-Men franchise, if you remember, but that Colossus was more like a Silver Surfer slash T-1000 kind yeah. of character. But now I think that we got like the original iconic Colossus from the comic books, especially with the Russian accent, finally. And how did you kind of settle on the actual vo on the voice you used for him in the end? Uh, what do you mean? How did you kind of settle on the, the type of voice you were using and the actual characterization of that? Well, it was it was a tough process in the beginning because Tim Miller, as I said, had a you know his own vision. So we changed so many different you know accents from like the softer ones to like the hard ones, which would work. Uh, you know so. We, we went through, like, through so many things, but it's, it, it's not just ADR because you have to put all those cameras and you'd have to do all those you know, facial expressions. So it's, it's really a specific process that I was going through and when I, I'm still going through that like on Deadpool 2 and in a few months for X-Force. And what is that like to have all these cameras like, in your face mapping every movement and everything like that? How does an actor do you kind of deal with that process? It's crazy. It's, it's, it's hard. It's something that I'm not used to. I'm a, theatrical, a theater actor first, and yeah, I did lots of shows and lots of movies in my life, but this was like the first time having like those cameras like here and here and here, and you know, whatever you do, it's going with you all the way, and you need to focus on imaginary green screen people and everything else, so it, it's a tough thing, but then when you see the result, when the movie comes out, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I'm not complaining at all. And what was that like that when you first got to sit down and watch Deadpool? I haven't seen. I, I was watching. I was that was premiere of Deadpool in New York, but I I haven't seen anything. I was just like watching, and when the movie f was finished, I just couldn't remember anything because I was so under shock that the movie is that crazy and that good. So I just went day after that, and I watched like two times in in, in a row. And I was so crazy proud because nobody believed in this movie. Uh, Fox didn't thought that this is going to be like a huge movie. And thanks to fans and thanks to like this amazing team of, of uh, directors and actors, we did like a huge franchise now. And this thing will continue for a long time, definitely. And how long then does it, you mentioned having all the cameras and everything in your face and doing all of the work with the cameras and things. How long does that take for your entire process to shoot what you have to then? Well, it took me for the first one, like, all in all, like, five months. Wow. Yeah, but, well, not every day, of course, mm. but, like, five, ten times a month. It depends, you know, because yeah. it's really sensitive work, especially because you, at the same time as you're, like, acting and doing everything else, you need to be in the same uh, path with the CGI people, with the computer animation. So, you know, and sometimes... We just have, like, Ryan wants you to do this, and Tim Miller wants you to put, like, these things, so we have to film it again, and then the guys need to get, make it again in the, in the you know, uh, animation thing. So it's, it's really a hard process. So the only thing that I can say, like, in Deadpool 2, it's going to be much harder because there's, like, three times more of Colossus. So it's, it's going to be... And that must be really exciting for you. Yes, and especially because this script was unbelievable, and... I would love to share so many things, and, <laughs> but there is like that thing called NDA, the like legendary thing in which I can lose this beautiful job. But oh, thank God for that. Whoever did this, thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> they did that on purpose, yeah. the evil. Um, but you mentioned with the NDA, yeah. I, I, I don't know why. Yeah. You mentioned with the NDA, that must be kind of, as a comic book fan, as well as a, like an actor, that must be really infuriating for you because you're just like, I just want to share so much of how good oh it God. is, and you can't. I couldn't like for the first part. I couldn't say why I'm going to Los Angeles. And when I like, I just told that to my mom and dad, but they just don't know what that is. So, but like everybody was asking me well, which movie, are you? and you, I just want to say, I just want to tell people, like especially like now in the Deadpool 2 with all the great things that are coming. You know, I just want to say. With, 
I just can't and I just need like it's worth waiting though and it's hard yeah yeah especially when you go to comic cons and people just want to know and I just want to say but I just can't say and yeah it goes like that and you mentioned coming to events like comic con and things like that what's been the cool other than doing these things what's been the coolest thing you've been able to do because you had the role of Colossus and the success of it. The travel this much and seeing all these amazing you know, countries and for example I just came back from I went I was in China and then I was in Philippines just like two weeks ago now I went back to Los Angeles where I live now and I'm now in London I'm going back to Los Angeles then I'm going back going to Madrid so I'm traveling as crazy filming at the same time yeah, so... That's an amazing... Yeah. And before, like Deadpool 2, I finished the show for Stars called Counterpart with J.K. Simmons, oh, wow. which is coming out in January. Yeah, with lots of great English actors. And, so. you, and you mentioned theatre is, your, is one of your, yes. is your first loves. Now, how do you think working in theatre actually helps you when you're doing all the work with the cameras and stuff now? Because theatre is a very emotive experience. Which, well, it's the essence of our job, so... In America, people are not that like fond of theater, which is weird, especially like on the, on the West Coast. But like for me, I finished the Academy of Dramatic Arts in Eastern Europe, so I started in theater. For, so for me, it's it's much easier for all these things that I'm doing. I have like four years of like really amazing school. So and and I love theater. Unfortunately, I don't have time now to do this, but but I'm just hoping to come back and do lots of performances in the future. Who knows, Deadpool the musical? On, yeah, on yeah, I, yeah. Just, just putting it out there. We're going to open the mics up for questions now, so if you would like to ask Stefan a question, all you have to do is stand under the lights of, of Doom there and ask away. So if you'd like to ask a question, just go and stand up there. Now, one thing I did here, um, you got to record Kevin Smith's uh, ringtone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, How that did was, that come about, and what was that like? Uh, I was, uh, it was San Diego Comic Con this year, and he's such a huge fan of, of Colossus. So it was weird, because I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith, like from the Clerks, and, yeah. and he's a comic book legend. So he was just like, during the interview, he was like, can you do like a voicemail for me? And I was like, yeah, why not? So I tried like thing like, uh, Kevin, pick up the phone. Well, pick up the phone. You know, something like, I was like doing so many different, like, you know. Language, please. Kevin, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> Take a protein bar. It's a good for bones. And so on and so on. And the going to things like San Diego Comic Con and seeing the and meeting the fans, what kind of positive experiences have you had from them? Or how does that kind of make you then feel about the work that you do? Oh, well, as I said, like for me, I'm, I was I was always on the other side. I'm, a com I'm, you know, the good thing for comic cons is when I come, whatever I earn, I spend back. I give back because I just buy comic books and I just buy artworks and T-shirts and everything else. So I was always on the other side, kind of the table. Mm. So for me now, it's I, I totally understand everybody here. So I'm like not used to, you know, being in this kind of a position. So. <laughs> So for me, um, I'm just getting so much beautiful energy. I never had like any bad experience. People are so amazing. Just like they're giving me boost to just continue, you know, making and working in this way. And I really feel good when people come and they go with, uh, you know, thank you for making Colossus the way he was my childhood hero in uh, X-Men cartoons. Or, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just so humble and I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity to be you know, fulfilling my dream and like dream of other fans. And aside from Colossus, if you could do any other superhero or be any other superhero in any the movie, cartoon, or anything, who else holds a special place in your heart? Uh, oh. Hmm. Well, we all, of course, I never saw uh, Slavic Batman, but there is like a Red Sun Superman. <laughs> it can happen. Yeah. Never, anything can happen in comics. Yeah, but like, I would love to play Craven the Hunter, you know, it's, it's, it was like, you know, Jason Momoa could play that, but he's Aquaman now, so thank you, Jason Momoa, for that. So maybe Craven, I love Punisher. I love, yeah, so it's. I have a question from this young person. Yeah. Miss Iron Man. <laughs> um, I was going to ask what your favorite part of recording Deadpool was. Like, you know the first one, like, what was your favorite scene to film? 
Definitely the, the end. Definitely the last monologue, you know, like that four or five moments, because we tried so many, especially the puking part, you know, like, and, you know, like, That's, that was a funny thing, because Tim Miller has, like, the empathy thing. He cannot listen to somebody trying to, you know, puke, because then he pukes. So he had to, like, leave the room when I was doing, like, that, you know, thing. So whenever you don't want to see him close, you know, when I, when I want to try something, then I just start puking, and then he leaves the room, and then I can film by myself for a few minutes, and, you know. But you're going to see a lot of puking in the sequel, too. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the one thing we do know, then. Yeah. That's well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with the sequel comes a new director as well. David Leach. David yeah, Leach, the yeah. John Wick and Atomic Blonde director. What kind of a difference do you think he's made then? Because as you mentioned there, John Wick and Atomic Blonde are two incredibly stylized films in re for action and also the visual feel. Well, you can never compare directors because every, you know, they all have their own visions and um, David Leach is something totally different from Tim Miller, especially in that action kind of thing, which he's like known for. So I'm really happy because you're gonna see so many anthology fights in, in the sequel between like really amazing characters which you, know, you can't know. say. Arr, yeah. So, but the thing is, the action scenes are, are, well, the first one had like amazing action scenes, but this one is going to be like a totally different way, but in, in a, I don't know how to explain by words, but you will see, and I think that you can understand what, I, what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, it, David Leach is an amazing person, amazing director. And working with Ryan Reynolds now, he seems to be on screen to be in a, oh, oh, uh-huh, uh -huh. you don't want him You're to wait. Good. I apologize. That's okay. as, as you were saying about the four or five moments scene being your favorite scene, I was wondering, obviously Colossus has this moral code not to kill Ajax. Would you have killed Ajax? <laughs> Me personally? or Yeah, yeah well, what's your... Because obviously you're giving this big speech on sparing an enemy is what makes you a hero. In your personal, from your point of view, what would you have done? Well, it's, you know, Colossus is some sort of a... a Marvel's response to Superman in some sort of a, like iconic, you know, old school superhero. Yeah. He doesn't kill, he just, you know, believes in justice. And I believe in justice, of course, in that way. So uh, I, 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 I think the world needs Colossuses or, or Supermans in that way. So I wouldn't kill Ajax. But that's why Deadpool is Deadpool. He doesn't really care. He can do the stuff yeah. other heroes can't do. He so, can do the things other heroes can't do. Yes. And yeah, I don't know if you saw the last one, Deadpool Kills Marvel Universe comic book. Uh, I've been reading on bits of it, yeah. Uh, it's, it's awesome. That's why Deadpool, that's, that's why I'm trying, well, Colossus is trying to make him an X-Men. And, you know, that's a, a no-go, but he's trying. That's, that's who Colossus is, you know, in that positive way of thinking, you know. And I have to protect the X-Men you know, motives, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I believe there's another gentleman who's going to the microphone. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering if you can say, um, is Josh Brolin a good cable? Josh Brolin is unbelievable, but this is not just me talking because I'm in the movie and Josh is a great guy. The, the way, uh, he acts, because in the beginning when they said that Josh is going to be uh, Cable, I was like, that, that's perfect. Even that I thought that Cable needs to be like bigger than yeah. all of so us. That's like, what I was you thinking know. as well, because he's quite big in and the comics. Does I he... think that this yeah. was a perfect choice, because when you, see, when you see him on the screen, you will know why I'm telling you this. The way, he, the energy he has got, and the way he's acting, the way he, he is Cable. He, as we have Ryan Reynolds as yeah. a perfect Deadpool, and I don't think that no one in the world could do better Wade Wilson than Ryan Reynolds. That's yeah. the same thing for for Josh Brolin. There are like few scenes in the movie you will be you will be geeking out because it's exactly like Rob Liefeld's creations. Like the the way the way you saw him in the comic book is going to be on the screen. Plus, there's like a big thing with Domino, and I love that nice. that that yeah. girl. She's an amazing actress, and I love the way she, she's different in this in this movie from like comic book. But this is this this is a perfect casting. You know, okay. and well, I hope I'm going to see you yeah. again next year so we can talk about it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. That was a great question. What was it like then working with, you mentioned Ryan Reynolds there, what was it like working with him? Crazy. Yeah, as I said, crazy. It's because he, he's so funny. 
and he doesn't stop. So, you know, all the, people are asking, like, were there any anecdotes or, like, from the, from the filming? Everything that was funny is in the movie because they film everything, what's going on. So when you, you laugh so much in the scenes and there's so much of improvisation during filming, so then when you're done with filming, you just want to go to a hotel because you're, like, so tired of everything. So it's, yeah. Do you think it's that kind of anarchic energy and great sense of humor that can actually help drive a cast through a long day? Because some of your filming shootings are massively long. Uh, but the thing is, like, when you're doing something like this, when you, can, when, when you have, it's not Shakespeare, you know, it's something that you, that you can just, like, change, you can move, you can build, you can add, you can cut, you know. So everybody loves their roles, and doing a comic book movie is really the most beautiful thing that I did. I, I, I was doing, like, so many, like, amazing projects and like really amazing things but doing comic book movie it's it gives you so much of a freedom and if you're a comic book person then there is no limit for you you know so and when you have Ryan Reynolds who is like a huge comic book fan and he, like he is as I said Wade Wilson so when he comes to the set it's like fun all day long it's like you're having a party and that party is becoming a huge movie it becomes like a one of the highest grossing R-rated movies of all time when the movie had all the success and it came out and it was doing amazingly well, how did you kind of find out and how did you react? For the, uh, for the, about it the was, success of it. It was, it was that wave that was, that was going, you know, nobody expected. I was talking with Tim Miller when we found out like, that all the records are getting broken and Tim Miller was like, this is ridiculous. This is, nobody thought that this is going to happen and it's, it's, I'm still confused because it's beautiful, but it, it's, cool. it's unbelievable. And a question from this gentleman. I know it can't happen right now, but for me, I would love to see you fight the Hulk. If you could fight any Marvel comic book character, say the universe was merged, who would you fight? Hulk, of course. Maybe Thor, just to see, you know, what's going on. The Thing. The Thing would be interesting. Colossus versus Thing. Do you think you'd defeat the Hulk? I think, you know, in, in those Marvel, the strongest heroes, they're kind of close. We have like Thing, Thor, Hulk, who else? Maybe I would try to go on like Silver against Silver, like against Silver Surfer, but he has a cosmic power, so I, I would lose. But then again, who else? Yeah, I would, unfortunately, because of the, you know, the uh, studio politics, we cannot fight with Avengers against Thanos because we're like the X-Men is a part of uh, Marvel, but it's still something like different. Do you think different. they'll ever work out a deal? Sorry? Do you think they'll ever work out a deal? I, I, I'm hoping, because now like with these TV shows, I think that Fox and Marvel are kind of coming together in a way, but come on, like everybody would love to see Wolverine and all the X-Men together with Avengers or, you know. I, 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 as a comic book fan, I don't like this situation, but on the other side, as an actor, I can understand some of the things I don't approve them, but that's the way it has to go. Thank you. Thank you. It would be cool to see, like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy with X-Men. It's with Deadpool. Come on, Deadpool with Avengers. It would be awesome, wouldn't it? It would be amazing. Um, obviously, one of the main things I remember about Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds' interview saying that he's definitely taking a suit off set. I wanted to ask, did you get anything off the set? <laughs> Unfortunately, I could just take a computer or those little cameras, but like, no, they, no unfortunately I didn't, no. Now I'm trying, I'm picking on something right now, but I, I'll tell you next time what I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to take. There is like, yeah. Mm. But I'm trying to, but yeah. Ryan loves those costumes and I, I wanted to take one of those costumes, but unfortunately I, they don't, they don't want to give it to me. You never know. No. You're just going to be more like um, stealthy now when you're walking around set and looking at things going, hmm, <laughs> I like that. And now you've kind of worked in both Croatia and you've worked in the US as well, haven't you? Yes. You've done roles on both sides. Yes. What is the main difference when working on those two kind of continents? Mainly financial, mainly. Everything else, actors are actors. You know, when you, when you have like big budgets, you have freedom in with the way that, you know, like, production-wise, but, like, acting with good director, with good act actors, and, you know, with a good team is all, 
everywhere it's the same. So there are not like big differences between you have good actors, bad actors, good directors, bad directors. Only way is like you have 70 million for a movie in the States and you have like 600,000 for a movie in Europe or like maybe a million, two, three. Those are the differences mainly, so. And do you think, what, you know, you've worked in theater, you've kind of... Yeah, yeah, and I've been working in Europe too, so a lot, like all that XU region in Spain, Germany. I've been doing lots of things, but it's a that's why Hollywood is Hollywood. Right now you have like few bigger markets like India or China, but, you know, it just depends how much money they want to involve and get into that. And what's a typical day like for you now when you're filming kind of Deadpool 2 at the moment? Just a normal day, like getting up in like six in the morning, being on the set all day long, going back home. It just, you know, depends on the schedule. Fair enough. Now we've got time for a couple more questions. If you'd like to ask a question, now's the time to go to one of our lit microphones there in the middle, and then we can, you can ask your question to Stefan. And is there a kind of... Oh, well, I, think I just want to ask, why is this green light like there? I don't know. I think, yeah. Oh, wow, I can see you now. <laughs> we have a question from um, a young man here. At the very start, you said that um, you signed on to four um, movies. Um, what's, do, what is that about you going to do for Deadpool movies? Yeah, Uh, that means definitely that, that you're going to see like Colossus three times more and one of them is definitely Deadpool 2, the next one will be X-Force and the fourth one we still don't know is that going to be because the X-Men timeline is coming close to uh, Deadpool timeline and you have New Mutants and they're coming out in, in April next year and they're in this timeline too. So we just wait to see what Fox is gonna decide, you know, where, where are we gonna see Colossus for the fourth time. But you can be sure Deadpool 2 and the X-Force are gonna be full of Colossus. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now it's almost Halloween and you're here at Comic-Con. If you could dress up as any character, any superhero, does it, any supervillain from any franchise, who would you like to be and why? Who would you dress up as? Hmm. That's a tough question. I would like to be original, but like, yeah, maybe Batman. I don't know, yeah. It's, it's, it, Batman is one of like the first comic book heroes for, you know, all of us. I'm still kind of Marvel guy, so I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> but uh, I'm not a cosplayer generally. I'm, I'm you know. I was a shy kid, so I was, I, I don't know. Fair enough. Slavic Batman could come to life. Slavic Batman. There you go, you're bringing him back. The Slav Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we've got for with Stefan, so please give me a massive round of applause. Hey guys, thank you so Stephen much Capitan. for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Stefan will be signing throughout the weekend so if you, and doing the photo shoots with, so if you haven't had a chance to get your tickets, then that you need to head over to our signing area, which is directly over there, right next to the stage. But one more time for Stefan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. I have seen God. I stand before you humbled by the military treatment.